So it's hard to identify a particular person or, or an authority that started this whole process in prosecution of the NGO com uh, community in Egypt. Uh, but we can tell from the people who testified against this, which was particularly mainly uh, Omar Suleiman, who was the chief of the uh, intelligence in Egypt, and uh, as well as Minister Faiza Abu Naga, the Minister of International Cooperation. Uh, and with the cooperation with the Minister of Justice, the current one and the previous one, they um, started this whole process of prosecuting the NGOs and interrogating the members of the rights organizations in Egypt. And this is why we are currently, we have already submitted um, a legal complaint formally to the public prosecutor against the Minister of International Cooperation as well as the current and the ex-Minister of Justice. No, it was very clear because there was a, a very uh, severe s smear campaign against civil society organization in Egypt, and particularly those who are funded by foreign organizations. And it was very clear because we have a state-controlled media, that means that this was dictated by the authorities. And it was also very clear how this whole campaign against civil society was only in, in going from from bad to worse and it was escalating all the time and there was a process of criminalizing uh, civil society organizations even in the language so starting by talking about those who are involved in foreign funding to by by November 2011 the language was those who are implicated in foreign funding and then it turned at the end as the suspects who are involved in foreign funding. So this was this this was an intentional and systematic criminalization of the work of civil society and their image in society. Uh, they can do that but with a struggle and very with a very very marginal difference between the state uh, owned uh, media why because the independent media or the so-called independent media are mainly owned by businessmen who's got so much at stake and uh, they can be easily pressured or threatened by by the government and this was very clear from the new channels that emerged after the revolution that was at the beginning very vocal and had very um, outstanding critics and people from representatives from the opposition who were either silenced or were forced to leave those channels. It's the same with the newspapers. So it's very hard to say that now we like we have a significantly liberated even portion of the media, even those that are not stayed on. What well, in general there is a, like, a general disappointment in, in in the reaction of all those groups that you uh -huh. you've mentioned, uh, and this disappointment, although it's specific to this case, but is also representative of the disappointment of the Egyptian public generally, from those who were elected and became in parliament or became emerged as as new powers, and their effectiveness on altering the reality or the political realities in Egypt. Uh, for, for the Salafis, I mean, they, uh, they are trying to find their niche. I mean, they're still struggling to find their way. They don't want to be uh, just as, as moderate as any other uh, political power because their niche is just their edges, their, them being very, uh, very religious, very strict and conservative on, on that sense. But at the same time, compared to the Muslim Brotherhood, they are the more vocal voices in, in, in politics in Egypt. Whereas if we look at the Muslim Brotherhood, and particularly in this case, they were very silent about how we were treated and how the, the NGOs uh, were raided and, and how the workers were there were, were, were treated on that day and later on with the interrogation and the whole prosecution process. Um, the Muslim Brotherhood, they always pick their battles and they have done so since, they, since, the, since the revolution. It was also very obvious from, 
very um, clear incident that needed support, particularly with, with an, it had an, an, an edge of uh, a need for, for, for a conservative or, or, or religious flavor to it. Like, for example, when that woman was stripped naked in the streets of Cairo and was stepped on, not a single um, Muslim Haradahut member came out in the street in the protest, even, even the Muslim Brotherhood women did not participate in that protest that we all marched in the, the March of Women uh, against what happened that day. And when I spoke to them and they said, well, we've waited uh, for 80 years for that day. We want to wait until we just have complete power and then we start like representing and, and, and defending certain issues. But right now they are just want to remain stable. And the same with the NGO, I mean, even in the parliament, the, the most that they have done is that they summoned the ministers and the people responsible for the whole issue about the scandal of the, the foreigners leaving without knowing how it happened and who gave permission to that and how that breached the independence of the Egyptian judiciary. And after the hearing, nothing happened. I mean, and we didn't see a result or, or even a follow-up to that. So this was a disappointment. As for the liberals, it's the same position as uh, in, in all the other issues that we are um, challenged with in Egypt now. They are trying to make a difference, but they are lonely voices in the parliament and they are not really able to do so much and it's, such, it's a very big disappointment for the constituencies who supported them and got them there in the parliament. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. And this was in, uh, you can see it in the media all the time and uh, trying to portray all those who are involved in uh, foreign funding as spies and even with you see it in court as well with the civil rights lawyers trying to turn this whole case into an espionage case and uh, accusing us that we were trying to implement a foreign agenda or breach the so, um, sovereignty of, of Egypt so uh, of course, I mean this. I mean, when you talk about the people in the field, in the civil society organizations, they're very supportive of us, and they understand the type of work that we do. But when you look at the Egyptian government, where uh, Egyptian public, where all they get is their information is from state-controlled media and mainly television, uh, well, it's only normal that they would believe such allegations. Uh, well, uh, as I mentioned, uh, this case is a representation actually of the, the state of Egyptian politics right now. That it's going backwards, we're going to square one, we're going to the days before the 25th of January, where all the liberal rights and civic rights are being withdrawn, more control over the media, and less protests from the public because the Egyptian public got, are now very tired of this whole process. They're very tired of the insecurity the, and the instability and the fear. And this is what's happening exactly to us in, and to our families. They just want to wish to just see this whole case over and done with. And as the Egyptian public, they just want to see this whole process of transition and the revolution over and done with. And they, some, many of them are just wishing for the, for even unfortunately the times of Mubarak, where they didn't have all this insecurity and uncertainty in their lives. As for the um, the, the the political powers, again. As they have been silent with our case, they have also been silent outside with the different issues about Egypt because they just want to find a place, a seat in the parliament that they can secure. And then later on, maybe they can do something about all the demands and the challenges that are going. So it's a very, very short-sighted approach from all the political powers.